Maths is an analog computer designed for musical purposes. It is based on the principle that all signals inside a modular synthesizer, whether audio, control, or event, are made up of the same material, voltage. Maths takes advantage of the fact that at its root, voltage can only really do three things. It can go up, it can go down, or it can stay the same. At any point in time, any signal can be interpreted as nothing more than a value. Maths can generate and manipulate four such values at any given time, hence its name. It can also combine them together in various ways, resulting in new values at the outputs. In these examples, maths itself is not generating the sound, rather it is controlling things about the sound generated by the DPO. We'll look at the outer channels first, starting with channel 1. The core of what these channels do is follow control voltage and slow down any change in the voltage. A signal goes in the input and comes out the output. When the signal goes up, it is slowed down by an amount set by the rise time. When the signal goes down, it is slowed down by an amount set by the fall time. The shape of the rise and fall sections is set by the response control. This basic concept allows the channel to be used in quite a few different ways. For example, with stepped voltage like this sequence, it can be used to add portamento or slew. We have independent control over the slew rate when the sequence rises and when it falls. It is possible to make the slew rate slow enough that the sequence does not reach the new value before the next value comes in. For a gate signal, it is like adding an attack and release phase to the gate, creating a basic attack, sustain, release envelope. The channel also has a trigger input, which causes it to immediately go from zero to full amplitude and back to zero, still according to the rise, fall, and response settings. Engaging the cycle button, or sending a gate to the cycle input, causes it to re-trigger every time it goes back to zero, so it can act as an LFO. rise and fall times are very wide range, so it could cycle as infrequently as every 20 minutes or longer. Or cycle quickly enough to be heard directly in an audio oscillator. The rise and fall times can be modulated by their CV inputs also for dynamic changing of speed and shape. For example, I would use channel 4 cycling at a slow rate to gradually increase the rise time. The fall time. And gradually decrease both at once. Note that adding voltage to the rise and fall input slows them down, while the both input speeds them up. The outer channels each have two outputs, one variable and one unity. The unity output is full amplitude for triggered functions and matches the amplitude of the input signal if the input is used. The variable output can be set to any amplitude you like and can also be inverted by turning the knob to the left of noon. Also, when the variable output is used, it is removed from the SUM and OR bus, as we'll demonstrate in the next video. There are also gate outputs on channels 1 and 4. The behavior of these outputs is the only difference between the two channels. For channel 1, the gate is labeled EOR, end of rise. This gate goes high whenever the channel is in the fall portion of the cycle. On channel 4, the gate is labeled EOC, end of cycle. It goes high when the channel is rising or standing still. Thus, when the channel is inactive, the gate is always high. These gates allow either of the channels to be used as clock sources in the system, among other things. A fun example within the maths itself is to use one of the gates to toggle cycling on the other channel. 
For example, let's clock the sequence with the EOC. And then molt it to the cycle input of channel 1. and use channel 1 to control the fold amount. Now we have rhythmic flourishes in time with the sequence. In part 2, we will go over channels 2 and 3 and demonstrate how the four channels of maths can be blended in various ways using the sum, inverted, and or outputs.